Well, let's go live now to the Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lee. Susan, it's good to see you this morning. Let's start with a Murray Darling. Uh, Tanya Plibersek pushing ahead with water buybacks while also extending deadlines. You've been well involved in this in the past. So what, in your view, will this lead to? This is terrible news for us out here in the Murray-Darling Basin, Pete. This may as well be another country to Tanya Plibersek and Chris Minns. The Labor brand is trashing us every single day, whether it be regional health or regional development. And now the biggest and the worst one of all, water policy. And I was listening to the Water Minister on the ABC this morning. She actually doesn't understand water. She doesn't understand the plan. It is no longer a plan. Victoria has pulled out. But I represented these communities when we went through an awful buyback in the past and what this announcement of water buyback will do and it's carefully cloaked in smoke and mirrors and extensions of the plan and and the most insulting thing of all handouts to us if we're not doing well what it will do is rip water and rip the heart out of the Murray and Murrumbidgee communities in a way that uh, look, I, I just, I've got to fight this, Pete. We've all got to fight this, but I just wish we had a government in Canberra and a government in Sydney that understood what irrigation does for farming. It feeds the nation, it feeds the world, it feeds Australia's balance sheet. So are you saying farms, you know, families, folks go under? Last time there was a buyback, there's always water to be sold because sometimes willing sellers are also desperate sellers or their bank is telling them they need to sell or they're at that stage where they're happy to sell. So if you put a price on water and you pretend that that's okay, that's completely misunderstanding. What happens when that water leaves the community, that farm closes down, those kids are not standing at the mailbox on that rural road about to hop on the school bus, that school comes under threat, doctors don't come to the area because there's not enough community support, infrastructure needs fall away, and they know this, Pete, because in that announcement, they talked about compensation, about supports. I mean, that is such an insult. That is such an insult. People have invested millions of dollars, their hearts, their souls, generations of family farms in irrigated agriculture. We do what we do better than anyone else in the world. Okay. And we care for the environment. So and we haven't got that balance right if we go down this path. The other view is the next dry period is around the corner. So what do you do about the rivers, the wetlands and the threatened species? We are recovering water and as Environment Minister I was well across that and there were lots of programs and projects that actually balanced the needs and looked after both the channels for irrigation and those channels for delivering water for the environment. If you put it in the simplest terms, the same channels can deliver both. So absolutely we need environmental outcomes. That's where we were heading. What this Water Minister and this Government has done is just tear that whole careful plan up and effectively sell out to the Greens. Now, we know that when the Greens talk about the environment, they never talk about farming. They never talk about rural communities. And back to my earlier point, Pete, um, the Victorian government, the Victorian government has seen this for the trickery that it is and said they're not going to do it. So it's not going to be a plan. And by the way, the Murray River is between New South Wales and Victoria. So if they're not in it, I really, really hope that the federal government doesn't think that New South Wales can contribute even more water. It's, it's pathetic. It's just, uh, it's just the most awful thing and I thought that there would be because we've had this pause since Labor came into government some careful consideration and some consultation no one comes here to talk to rural communities no one understands and uh, there's pure politics in this unfortunately okay, okay. Uh, just tomorrow this intergenerational report is out Susan what reforms in your view are going to be needed to pay for those big ticket items such as health age disability care defense etc well, I'm a bit sick of um, Labor telling us how bad it is. And I just say, we all feel a lot worse than we did a year ago. Now we've had Jim Chalmers, the Treasurer, the whole week talking about all the challenges. No solutions on the table. You just had Stephen Jones point to superannuation. I think I know what he was trying to say, but I do wonder if he was saying, well, we've got this big nest egg of superannuation and we might just have to draw down on that to uh, pay for the things that we need. So how would that work for older Australians? 
But another point I'd like to make, Pete, is that everybody, whenever there's this intergenerational plans and these predictions of the ageing of the population are brought down, uh, feels really gloomy about the ageing of the population. I love older Australians. I want to celebrate what they have contributed in their lives, what they can still contribute in their 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond, the wisdom they have, the learnings that they can give and actually not see them as a problem, but see them as part of the wonderful country that we live in. Susan Lee, we're out of time, but appreciate your time. We will talk to you again soon.